know about that massive, I mean huge security breach at Credit Bureau Equifax that left as many as 143 million Americans with their private information compromised. So here are some tips on what to do. Please welcome the Chief of Consumer Protection at the Washington State Attorney General's Office, Shannon Smith. I'm so glad you're here. Um, about half our staff already knows that they were compromised. How do you find out if you were part of the Equifax breach? You could find out if you were part of the Equifax breach by going to a website that Equifax has set up, Equifax Security 2017, and you could find out if you were uh, compromised by that breach. One caveat, though, is that I have heard reports that some of the information that's provided to you is not accurate. So you're better off assuming that you have been part of this breach rather than not. Than not. Now, at first, when you went to that site to find out whether you were part of it, you were offered a year's protection, uh, credit monitoring, but it required that you give up your rights to be part of a class action suit if you clicked on that. Has that now changed? That has changed. That was not Equifax's intent, and they have clarified that you will not be giving up your right to file a lawsuit or take action by taking that credit monitoring. Okay, so if we're all gonna assume we were part of this, what's the first thing we do? The first thing to do is to put a credit freeze on your credit reports. How do you do that? You contact the major credit bureaus. They have information on their website on how to do that. You have to provide your social security number and other information. For some uh, of the credit bureaus, you'll have to pay a charge, usually about $10 to put on a credit freeze, which is well worth it. And what does the freeze do? The freeze will stop anybody from opening credit in your name. So if somebody gets your name and your address and your social security number, they will not be able to open credit accounts in your name. They will not be able to get a mortgage in your name. It will stop them from doing that. What's the mechanism when they try to open the credit account? Somebody contacts me to see if it's really me or not? How does it this work? It just won't be done. Won't be done. There what if I want to get a mortgage? You have to thaw it. Okay. You have to contact. <laughs> that's right. You I have, have to, to thaw my freeze. You do. You have to contact the credit reporting agency and put a thaw on your credit freeze, so you could do the the credit transaction you want to do, and then replace that. It's usually the thaws for 24 hours gives you the oh, opportunity to um, to get the credit you need, the Yikes. mortgage, the the car loan. Um, but a credit freeze is the best protection you could take against somebody using your information to open unauthorized So accounts. I have to pay Equifax to freeze my credit even though they are the ones who allowed the breach? You don't have to pay Equifax. Equ Equifax is allowing folks to have a free credit freeze. Okay. I believe it's for 30 days after the breach to, to request a, a credit freeze. The other credit reporting bureaus may charge you for it. And who are the others? They are Experian and TransUnion. Okay, so those are the three we need to contact. Do we need to get a copy of our credit report? I recommend that folks get a copy of their credit report. Every credit reporting agency is required to give a consumer a free copy of their credit report once a year. So what I recommend that people do is they request their free copy from each credit reporting agency, one every four months. Mm -hmm. So that way you can get a new copy of your credit report. All the time. Yes, every four months. That's different than your credit score. Yes, it is. Explain what's, what's different. A credit score sets your credit worthiness, and that's what, credit, or that's what creditors use or mortgage companies use to determine whether or not they want to offer you credit and at what terms. Your credit report contains all of the transactions, and that's the important thing that folks need to monitor. Then make sure that these are all actually your transactions. They make sure that they're your transactions, and if you see anything suspicious on your credit report, take action right away. Okay, so are we also needing to monitor our bank statements, our Absolutely. credit card statements, all that kind Absolutely. of stuff? Absolutely. Monitor your bank statements for um, activity that you didn't do. Mm -hmm. uh, monitor your credit card statements for charges that you didn't make and be extra vigilant in reviewing those statements. And if you see something that looks like people have already opened credit, if you have been the victim of identity theft, any of that sort of thing, what do we do these days? That is... It, that is a really tough situation to be in, and there are some things that everybody should do immediately if they find that out. The first thing folks should do is file a police report. 
to detail that they have been a victim of identity theft mm -hmm. and state the account that was opened fraudulently in their name. They should also file a identity theft report with the Federal Trade Commission that could be done online and folks could file that report and have that. Oftentimes it is a good idea to take that police report and send a copy of it to the credit reporting agencies so they know that you have reported identity theft for uh, your uh, your name and then take that to any of the merchants that you have seen fraudulent accounts opened in to explain to them this is not my account this was opened without my authorization I'm the victim of identity theft and here is my police report and here is my FTC identity theft report wow. okay this is going to be with us isn't it this it is, is just going to be something we have to deal with going forward with all of the stuff on online on the dark web for sale we just have yes. to be careful thank yes. you so much for that thank you very uh, much we will put all of shannon's tips and website links on new day's website to make this a little easier to navigate please do check it out and make sure that you're covered up next a conference helping boost women in the workforce we'll be right back with that